So Mila, you play Milady de Winter, and you say about her that she's one of the most modern women in literature. What do you mean about that? Well, you know, when I think of myself as a real career woman, I started when I was 11. I mean, my work has been number one my whole life. And I've met a lot of guys that really resented that about me. Um, where, you know, I'm always working, I'm never there for them. So, you know, you feel the pressure of men being a bit intimidated by a strong woman who's got a major personal world and a major passion. And when you think about lots of career women, there is a stigma attached to it. It's like either the crazy executive or she's a ball breaker. But in a lot of ways, it really takes a lot for a woman to navigate through a man's world. Now imagine taking me, the person I am, and putting me in the 17th century. <laughs> I mean, I felt bad for her. I said, of course she has to kill, lie, <laughs> cheat, and steal. Because legally, she can't own her own property. You know, she can't even go outside the house unattended. So women had absolutely no rights in those days. So um, Lady De Winter, to me, is one of the most impressive women in the world because here she is going around, she's as good as all the men, and she's focused on her work, on what she does best. And she's still very feminine. Yes. And she's wearing beautiful clothes, heavy costumes for you. Tell me yes. about wearing those costumes and doing your own stunts. Yeah, it was quite amazing because um, when we first saw some of the sketches for my outfits, of course, the action outfits, I'm wearing pants. Okay. And I said, you know, we've seen this before. A period movie, a girl does a fight, she's disguised as man. <laughs> you know, I wanted to see the woman from the Van Dyke portrait take out a sword and just knock everybody out because that's something we've never seen before. And that's why I'm so proud of Paul because I think this movie really goes above and beyond any other 3D movie that's ever been made, actually. I mean, who's ever seen a period piece in 3D? Who's ever seen a woman with a corset and a big skirt flying through the air? You know, who's ever seen the Musketeers look so good? Mm -hmm. I mean, these boys look like rock stars, you know? They're, it's not about the floppy hats and like, the strange Musketeer outfits. I mean, they really um, have a modern view of them. And the fact is that Paul really used the 3D, not just as a gimmick. I mean, yes, we have great stunt sequences, great action, lots of things flying at the camera, but also he used it to really make the set pieces look phenomenal. These castles that we were in, the costumes. I mean, 3D is really going on the next level with this movie. You know your stuff. You read a lot about this era. Yes. So you're kind of an advisor for Paul also in this movie. You could have had this advisor title. <laughs> you know, um, for Is me, it true? listen, uh, you know, of course, being married to the director has its advantages in the sense that, you know, he's with me every day. And by the way, I have an extensive library. So, of course, when I knew he was going to do the movie, I brought out like 20 books under my chin and went through all of the art books from European museums. And we concentrated on Van Dyke because that was really the period. Um, so definitely there was a lot of etiquette that I was able to talk about and say, well, she wouldn't actually do this, she would do this. And this is inappropriate in this situation. So we have to like tweak it. So it's great because, you know, Paul and I, we really play off of our strengths and also from our weaknesses. And I are able to help each other, both of us. So it's your project in a way. It's our project, yeah. you know, it's a passion that Paul has wanted to do more than anything. And trust me, when he first talked about it, I was like, really? And then when I saw what he was doing, I just couldn't be more proud and overawed by him. I mean, he can do anything. Playing with Orlando Bloom, first time? Yes, and I've known him for 20 years <laughs> and it's our first movie together. It was so great to be able to see him and his beautiful pregnant wife, Miranda, at the time. and. You know, it was just so nice to be able to see so many people that I've known for a long time, old friends, making new friends. It was a joy. It was a joy every day to work on set. You are the movie for me. Thank you. You are the force of this movie. You're like a rock star in this movie. Thank I you. really, really enjoyed you. Oh, in the that's movie. so sweet of you. What's next for you? Resident Evil Retribution. <laughs> we start working next Monday. Oh my God, next Literally, Monday. we come back from here and boom, start principal photography. Got my big stunt sequence, like day one. Are you ready? <laughs> I'm as ready as I'll ever be, but let me tell you, these boots I'm wearing are kind of heavy. <laughs>
tell me about this adventure of Resident Evil. Did you expect it to it to be so big? No, you know what? Paul and I always call it the little movie that could. It's true. You know, we started off as like this small indie European horror action flick. And boom, it just snowballed and the fans were so behind us. So we're so grateful to the fans for allowing us to be at number five. You know, it's it's so rare that a franchise can go better and better and better with each one. But of course, when you have Paul as the director, I mean, he's always going to try and just like set the bar higher and higher. And well, as a main character, does you rock. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mila <laughs> Can I take a